Now, can you just tell us the extent of those injuries, firstly? We, we don't think they'll be out too long. I think with, with Jamie and Sean, we believe they'll be back uh, for the French game. Uh, Jamie had a tightening of his hamstring, so it's a one- to two-week injury. Sean uh, had a knee that affected his Achilles, um, and he had to leave the field. And look at a push, he could have been available this weekend, but uh, given uh, the physical nature of the game, the training that we need, and also he, the fact he's not played hardly any rugby um, in the last few weeks, um, we, we felt it right, not right to, to put him into the team this weekend. But we see him, both of them, being back in the next couple of weeks. Uh, with Cam, it's, it's slightly different. It's uh, obviously with a neck issue, neck issue uh, you're, you're just waiting to see how it recovers. So there's a neural element there. Um, and we're just waiting to get his strength back um, before he returns to full training. But we're hopeful like he'll have uh, a part to play in the championship later on. You bring in uh, Blade, James and Darcy. Um, can you just explain the thinking behind those three? They all played in the victory over Wales in October. Um, was that part of the thinking or is that just a happy coincidence? A happy coincidence, but it's, a, it's probably a coincidence because they, they were... Uh, they were very close to the team. Um, they played for us this season, played played uh, a number of games throughout autumn. He's been in very good form for his club. He, he just missed out on selection last week. Uh, and Darcy um, would have been in the mix too, but, but he's obviously not played as much rugby in the last few weeks. Uh, James has been going back and playing well for Harlequins. All three have been training well uh, and they're fit and ready to go. So. Well, there's, there's cohesion there and there's also the, the quality of the, the three players. Thanks, Gregor. Thank you. Gregor, Wales are missing quite a few players through injury as well. Do you feel that these opening games were, were particularly physical and that's contributed to the to the injury toll on both sides? Yeah, look, I think Six Nations rugby and Test rugby is physical. Uh, we're probably seeing more injuries in, in games now because players haven't had lots of games, lots of test matches or games at test match level to, to build up that robustness. Um, for a number of for a number of our players the weekend, it, it was their first game in a few weeks. Uh, as we mentioned before, Sean Maitland, um, I don't think he'd started a game since the end of September. So it's a testament to the, to the players' abilities to, to play so well in a, an intense international match. But um, that there are niggles or, or injuries that do come from these games. How do you feel having played them in the Six Nations so recently will affect this one, the, the confidence that your players will have from having gone to Wales and, and won, but then also them losing that sort of 18-year home streak against Scotland, that, that's going to hurt them and, and, and fuel them as well, isn't it? Yeah, there'll, there'll be both emotions, no doubt, at our camp. Um, uh, we, we've looked at that game and what worked well for us, but we also know Wales are, are an improved team since the uh, the autumn. I thought they played really well last week. They've got some real experienced players back in the mix for them, and they've got the confidence of, a, of an opening weekend win. And I'm sure they'll be determined to, to reverse the result from uh, a few months ago. Cheers, Greg. Thank you. Next question, please. Gregor, um, hi, James here from Sky. Uh, what have you made of um, Wales under Wayne Pivak and why do you think they've, they've struggled in the transition from, from Gatland? Well, no, on the basis of last week, um, we were really impressed. Uh, we felt that the, with the red card, it, it did change the nature of the game. Um, and Ireland had a lot of possession just after that. Wales had to make a lot of tackles and they showed how tough they were um, to front up defensively to, to, to get that win um, and show the improvements that they made since, since the autumn. And Wales, Wales are a quality team. If you, if you look at their, their individual players, they've got players close to 100 caps, well over 100 caps, players that have won Grand Slams, uh, and they've, they've got some real experience in that pack. So we, we expect them to perform. And we know that their game now looks to have added physicality um, from what we saw in, in the autumn. They're um, lacking. Um, they've got a few injuries. 
Wayne Pivek's been under a bit of pressure. Do you, do you feel like you can capitalise on that? No, these, these are irrelevant to, to, to us and our players. What, what's relevant is how we can impose our game and also how we can negate the strengths of the opposition. Each game is different um, and we'll wait and see what, what Wales bring and how we react to that. But the important thing is for us to build on the, the, the performance that we delivered last weekend. Thank you. Hi, Gregor. Um, but do you think that, uh, you know, without a crowd there, um, do you think there's any difference to home field advantage as to what there would be in normal times? Yes, and that's uh, a threat for us this weekend. We, uh, we've really fed up the energy of our crowd over the last two or three years with, with the selling crowds at, at BT Murrayfield. Um, it does give you help as you start a game, help um, if the opposition are on the front foot. Uh, so that won't be the case this week. We, we've gone away from home uh, four, four times since uh, since no crowds were were involved in the, the Six Nations, uh, whereas Rome, Lethley, Twickenham or, or Dublin. And you do feel that it, it's more of a neutral venue than ever before. So we've got to make sure that we, we don't let Wales um, make the most of that opportunity. We've got to create our own energy impose our game, even though there's not 60,000 supporters there uh, cheering us on. So you know, that that's an extra challenge for us being at home this weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm asking this question again. I, I missed the first part, but can you be a little bit more specific on, on the injuries to Red Path and to, and to Maitland and to Richie Pisa? Yeah, Jamie had a hamstring, which tightened up during the game. Uh, he obviously had to come off and... Uh, he, it's it's not a serious hamstring injury and we expect him to be back in full training next week um, or if not the, the French week. Uh, Sean Maitland had a couple of niggles that were affecting his Achilles and his knee, um, which was going to mean that he wouldn't be able to train this week. But again, we expect him to be back uh, next week, probably um, down with, it, with his club in, in London. Uh, and Cam Redpath... Um, presented with a neck injury um, or a neck issue the, the day after the game, which hasn't improved uh, and we've been liaising with his, his club um, after a, a scan on his neck and he, he'll probably miss the next few weeks. Um, we, but we just never know how quickly these these neck issues resolve. Um, but we're, we're optimistic he'll be, he'll be back involved with us at some point in the, later in the championship. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Greg, can I just ask? Um, you touched on it at the start, but the players had not. A lot of the players haven't had a great deal of rugby in the, recently because of you know a lot of postponements and, and COVID and, and such like. Do you, do you feel then that there's a lot of scope to, to build on that performance? I mean, a lot of people are, are raving about your performance, but do you think you can improve on that in the in the in the, the coming weeks because players will get back up to speed and, and get into a rhythm as well? Well, well that's the aim. Uh, we. We, we've all, always got areas we can improve and there was a few that we can notably um, finishing off opportunities um, that, that we created we we will get better as a, as a group uh, with more understanding but we have to play another four games which bring their own challenges and own situations that you have to adapt to uh, we're hoping for better weather this week uh, that was a, a huge positive of the performance last week that we were able to be accurate and play with width at times, even though the, the conditions were poor. Um, it's going to be very cold, but we're open for a dry ball this week so we can add even more to our game. Hi, Gregor. Um, obviously, there was a lot of talk uh, last week about 1983 and um, that long run. So I'll throw another unwanted stat at you, I think. It's been 25 years since 1996 that Scotland last won their opening two games in a... It was actually five nations back then, so it wasn't even the Six Nations. So is this, you know, a second consecutive week where this team can can end one of these uh, unwanted historic runs? We'll see. Like we, we, um, thanks for letting me know that because we don't often know these stats until after um, when, when things have been uh, achieved. And that's what we we have to focus on, um, earning the, the victory, earning whatever we achieve. 
Uh, the players have set about that task really well this week of training. I feel there's a there's a buoyant mood, but also a real focus that this game is going to be a very tough one, and we have to keep improving. So we, we'll see what happens uh, during those 80 minutes, but we know this is going to be a really tough challenge. Thanks a lot. All the best. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, please? Um, yeah, I'll throw in a one. Um, obviously, you know, the breakdown is going to be a, a big area and I've noticed that um, we also picked Aaron Wainwright, who's not the biggest. Um, do you think you can try and dominate Wales at the set piece? No, look, I'd argue Aaron Wainwright is, is a really good set piece player and quite big, um, certainly bigger than me. So uh, we, we see real quality within the, the Welsh um, forward back. Uh, it's like Ken Owens, who's who's so experienced, uh, a real leader defensively. Uh, Alan, Alan Wynn, obviously the, the most capped player in world rugby. Um, Justin Tipperick was outstanding last week, and he has been for, for a number of years. Uh, you have Falata, Lyon, and then Wainwright, um, who had a, a great um, breakthrough season for, for Wales a couple of years ago, amongst other players. So they, they're experienced, they're tough. Uh, and just like last week, uh, we know we're going up against a really good pack. Uh, 